So let's look at the active learning environment now because I feel that this is an area when we do our workshops, there's a lot of teachers who, who do, need, do need a lot of support within this area mm. um, because it's so new to them. If you're, if you're doing this already, great, you'll just hopefully take some really cool ideas from this. Um, but this will also help you to get started as well mm. if, you're, if you're, you're not sure. So there's two areas to active learning and that's your active lessons and then they're the active blasts which you literally just can slot in any time, any place, depending on where your kids are at. So if you see you've got a room full of kids who've it's got fog. <laughs> brain fog and they're sluggish and they're, then you, you, they take a dip with their uh, behaviour, then you know, actually, I'm just going to slip in a quick active mm. blast, refresh everything, and then we can get back down to business. Whereas an active lesson is much more a this is how we're going to teach this. We're going to do some data collection. We're going to do mm. a choose between activity. So it's, let me take you through. I was just going to say, Sorry. it's a lesson you would be teaching already, but we're going to give you some ideas on to make that active rather than a sedentary lesson. Mm. So one pain point I hear a lot is how can I get my classroom active without any fuss or chaos? Um, and uh, getting the kids to actually calm down after we've been a bit more active but yeah. there's lots of ways we can do that um, but here's a few teaching approaches that mm. we use at iMoves uh, that are really really effective that you can use as a whole lesson as part of a lesson as a little warm-up as a refresh anything you like so let's start with our teaching approaches so our teaching approaches are the easiest one which is plug and play mm -hmm. You literally put a movie on one of our active blasts. Um, it's maybe two to ten minutes long. It's usually around the, the children's tables and chairs in their classroom. And it's all about taking them from uh, feeling a bit sluggish right through to getting really refreshed, really mm. focused um, and, and ready to learn. Um, and they can be anything from two to ten minutes. So you can you can use a, a plug and play or you can you can do your own thing, it's mm. up to you. But it's easier and more fun uh, if you're using an active blast, particularly ones from iMoves. And it also gives the teacher um, an opportunity while the kids are being busy and active for you to just take a second out to mm. maybe prepare something else or deal with an issue that's happened. Um, the kids are involved, the kids are engaged and you can just take yourself off to one side and deal with whatever you need to deal with, which is sometimes really beneficial, isn't it? Yeah. You just need them to be doing something yeah, yeah. while you do something else really quickly. Mm. We also use an approach called top and tail, which is um, doing something at the beginning, something, some, something at the end to celebrate. Um, we have word action games, which are really nice, which we'll show you clips of, uh, mm. choose between. So is it true, is it false, is it high, is it low? Music and drama, kids love that, anything to do with music. Team games and problem solving and data collection and things like that. And then um, a circuit style approach where mm. they're, they're following a set of circuit cards. So really, really simple approaches. So all you'll need is your usual uh, teaching equipment, your whiteboard, uh, a stereo, a printer, uh, your flashcards, mm -hmm. um, anything like that and any other equipment that you might need. But it's really, really simple and you can just slot it in uh, to your usual learning approaches and mm. teaching approaches without any fuss at all. So let's start with having a look at a active learning blast, a plug and play, something that you might start a lesson with, end a lesson with, have in the middle of a lesson just to kind of um, reiterate what you've been learning, a little refresher. And this is for your younger years and it's all about maths and the, the math language of equal to, more, more than, than, less, less than, than yeah. fewer, least and most. <laughs> fewer, least and most, and that's our little song as well. So here we go, have a look at this. When we're comparing numbers, we need words to help us out. We can say them really quietly or be really loud and shout. We can say them over breakfast, eating cereals and toast. It's equal to more than, less than, fewer, least and most. a number that's the same and not more. More means a higher, like five is more than four. Less than means it's lower, like one is less than two. Understanding maths is fun for me and you. When we're comparing numbers, we need words to help us out. We can say them really quietly or be really loud and shout. 
We can say that mobile breakfast eating cereals and toast is equal to more than less than few at least at most. Least means it's lowest, the number that's quite small. Most is the highest number of them all. Fewer means it's lower, just the same as less. Learning these words means we don't have to guess. So when you are comparing some numbers in your head, remember words that help you before you go to bed. Practice them at breakfast with cereals and toast. It's equal to more than less than few, at least at most. Equal to more than less than few, at least at most. So hopefully you joined in with that little active blast. I hope you did and I hope you enjoyed it. And you're probably feeling now a little bit warmer, a mm. little bit out of breath. You're probably feeling a little bit more perky, a little bit more focused and ready to carry on with the rest of this workshop. So you were probably working there around four, five or six on that effort scale, which is all you need to start getting that blood flow to your brain and start to wake you up a little bit. And then exactly the same in the classroom, getting the kids to get waked up and ready to go. Yes, like pressing refresh Absolutely. on your laptop like we talked about before. So, um, so that was a plug and play and hopefully you did join in. Anything that we play for you today, we're going to encourage you to join in just to, I don't know, have a little bit of fun and prove a point at the same time, mm. uh, which is always a win-win. So let's move on to the next part. So word action games. And these are really, really easy to do and just push into any activity. Here's a nice one for spelling and numeracy for the little ones. So you might have a set of slides. We have a set of slides at iMoves where they'll have um, number one right through to number 10. And what they'll need to do in, in little groups or pairs or even on their own, the teams will spell the number, mm -hmm. so one, They'll write down the spelling and then they'll have to do a movement that is relevant to that number. Uh, so, for instance, a number one, they might stand up tall, they'll have arms in the air, they'll be balancing on their tiptoes and they'll be stretching up their bodies. And once everybody's in that position, you know it's time to move on to the next slide. So let's have a look at number two. So again, the teams would spell out the number. Um, you might have just, just three dashes or or a, a line where they would spell that uh, just to indicate how many letters it has. It always makes that easy for them. And then their movement might be with a partner, use two body parts to join up. So an elbow, <laughs> a knee, a hand or a foot or their forehead, which is always funny. So two body parts to join up. And once they're all in that position, you can move on to three, four, five, six, right up to number 10. And it's a really nice active way to get them learning and um, just practicing their spelling and practicing their numbers. So word action games are really useful for yeah. the little ones and the older ones. And here's a word action game for the older ones too. So this word action game is all about agile adverbs. So we would have a set of actions and a set of adverbs and you would choose one action and one adverb and then do the action in the way of the adverb. So give you an example, running on the spot gracefully. So here's Jack and Morgan to show you how this works. So here's Jack and Morgan demonstrating running on the spot determinedly. There they go, running on the spot determinedly. And it's so funny when you see the kids <laughs> doing all of this, isn't it? There they go. So this is disco dancing awkwardly. <laughs> there we go. And you can absolutely mix and match any of the adverbs with yeah. the actions. It doesn't matter. They choose which, which action goes with which adverb. And often it helps them to understand if they don't really uh, understand the word or the adverb, what it means. Yeah. It helps them when they do it. Here they are sh shadow boxing gracefully. <laughs> beautifully. <laughs> oh, Jack's doing a beautiful job, isn't he? Oh, Ooh. lovely. We're squatting cautiously by the oh, looks of this. Very cautiously. Very, very cautiously. <gasps> oh, and I think the next one is jumping jacks excitedly. 
this one's going to be great. I know. I can't wait for this one. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love doing this in a lesson. It's so much fun. So we've just had a look at some word action games, one for the younger ones, one for the older ones, the agile adverbs, which I love, mm. by the way. This is another concept, the choose between concept. So uh, you can use movement to illustrate an answer. So whether it's true, false, higher, lower, herbivore, carnivore, whatever yeah. it can be, it can be shown through movement. And it's just a really nice way to get the kids up when they're feeling a little bit flat and need a bit of a boost. It's just another way they can show their answers and it's so much more fun to do it like this. So here's one um, we prepared earlier and this is a prefix suffix. So where kids are in pairs, you've got a, a, an A and a B if you like. A is facing the board and they're going to be reading random words off the board which you will have prepared obviously and then you'll have B with their back to the board and thinking about which word they're being whether it's being read out and whether they should be jumping backwards for a suffix or forward for a prefix. So this is the kind of list you might show on their board, on your board should I say, which is uh, they might be reading them randomly, elevation would be a backward jump and then a forward jump might be supermarket or cyberspace. Um, and the kids would then just jump forwards and backwards in their mm. pairs, reading the uh, words off randomly and then they would switch so they both would have a go and it's just really good fun isn't it yeah uh, and it's a really nice way to learn and just and, and use this as a, a little a refresh or a, a, a test or plenary or, or yeah. whatever you whatever you need to do with it it's really nice to use it at the end of the lesson to see who's understood mm. what you've been teaching and just a really nice way to to show their answers rather than just writing them down on a on a piece of paper yeah. while they're seated um, it's a lovely way to show, isn't it? Yeah, and you find that kids, when they're using movement with words, they remember it yeah. much more. And they understand it. If they, yeah. they weren't sure what a, what that word meant, then they really do get to understand it. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to have a look at some, some more actions uh, through the lovely Jack and Morgan, who are going to show different ways on how we can do our choose between actions. Unhappy. Medication, cyberspace, anti-clockwise, soundly, provider, supermarket. This idea is to use for maths questions where the number may be higher or lower and the movement they are doing is relevant to the answer. So the first answer is low and the second answer is high. This time with a little bit more energy the answer is a jump high. This version is a true or false so if the answer is true we step forwards with thumbs up. If the answer is false we step backwards, hands crossed. I love this. True. And so easy. Or false. Excellent work, chaps. So here's a lovely music and drama based one that we use uh, in science. And it's all about getting the children to understand the different forces, so the positive force and the neg negative force of, of a magnet mm -hmm. um, and how if it's a positive and a negative they'll be happy together, they'll attract, attract. and if it's a positive, positive or negative, negative they will repel um, and so we use music and drama to um, to kind of push the point home as it were. Yes. So we, we just get them uh, to choose if they're going to be a positive force or a negative force. Yeah. If they're a positive force, they will skip around the room happily, being super positive and energised and whoa! And if they're a negative force, they're going to be grumpy and stamping around and they've got a grumpy old face and they're not very happy with anything. And so you'll be able to see clearly who's chosen positive and who's chosen the negative force. Now, they'll do that to the music. The music will mix will come on and they've got about 30 seconds 
something like that to stomp around or be super happy. And when the music kind of stops, a little bit like musical chairs, it'll start to fizz and crackle. And we'll show you in a moment. But then they have to choose the person next to them when the music stops. And if they're a positive force with a negative force, they will do-si-do. -si -do. They're really happy to be t together. But if it's positive or positive or negative or negative, they have to kind of repel and jump apart, pull faces at each other and all sorts of crazy things like that. It's just a really good uh, way to, to point, push the point home. So we're going to ask Jack and Morgan to demonstrate uh, this one thing for you to see how it all fits together and how uh, super fun it can be. Yeah. So Jack, give me your best excited face. And Morgan, give me your grumpy face. You're going to be negative. Jack's going to be positive. Are you ready? Let's start to move around. Off you go. Moving around the room. Positive force, negative force. <laughs> okay, find a partner. Positive and negative, you can do-si-do. -si -do. Off you go. They're happy together. Lovely. Off you go again. This time, both be a positive force. Brilliant. Really go for it, guys. Positive and positive aren't happy together. So when we try and touch, what's going to happen? Oh. And again, no, it's just not going to work. Well done, team. So this concept is all about circuits. So different cards all around the classroom, on the wall, and the children move around and do the different activities on each card. So children are in small groups, about three or four, depending on how many you've got in your class, and they move around the room, uh, give them a couple of minutes at each station um, and you can have a timer or you can ring a bell to tell them when it's time to change. So this circuit is about punctuating sentences and putting the apostrophe in the correct place and this is about plural possession so the plural is the apostrophe after or before the S. So um, let's have a look at this one. The postman's bags are full of letters. The children would look at that, fill out the worksheet with the correct form of that sentence, and then they would do the action on the card, which is squatting down, pretending to look through a letterbox. So it's all really nice and relevant to yeah. the sentence on the yeah. card. And there's, there's 10, uh, sets of these so lots of different uh, exercises to do and all really carefully thought out so it's not all about just doing squats or jumping jacks it is really a good workout a good full body workout as they're going around the circuit so you know lots of good strength uh, work going on yeah and what we've done is um, we've put some music in there as well to make it even more fun so you might have 40 seconds of work time and 20 seconds rest so they have a 20 second scurry between each mm. work card. Um, and that's the way that you structure it if you're using our music mixers. We have, a, we have a one minute work and a 30 second rest, or we have 40 seconds work and a 20 second rest. So depending on the age of your children, depending mm. on um, how much time you want to let them work it out, then it will depend on what music mix you yeah. use. So, but it's a really lovely way doing circuit cards because again, you're just facilitating all this lovely activity and mm. they're learning at the same time um, and it's it's just a really nice way to do it. I love circuit cards mm. I think they're brilliant and it's so easy to do I know I know so easy to do mm. so that's circuits